Just as the ventilator needs to know when to start a breath, so it needs to know when to end it, and this is defined by the cycling variable. This setting determines which parameter is used to open the expiratory valve to end inspiration and start expiration. These parameters called cycling variables are an important determinant of how comfortable your patient is going to be with their mechanical breaths, as it represents another point at which they can exercise control over their tidal volume. The cycling of a mechanical ventilator breath occurs after the variable reaches the set value. Typical methods of ventilator breath cycling includes time-cycled ventilation, flow-cycled ventilation, pressure-cycled ventilation, and volume-cycled ventilation. Let's look into these cycling methods next. A breath is considered time-cycled if the inspiratory phase ends when a predetermined time has elapsed. This is usually a feature of mandatory modes of ventilation. The preset time in time cycling is determined by the respiratory rate and the inspiratory to expiratory ratio set by the clinician. For instance, when one has a respiratory rate of 20 and an inspiratory to expiratory ratio of 1 is to 2, it is understood that, from a total 3 second breath cycle, the inspiratory phase will last 1 second. In other words, after one second the ventilator will terminate inspiratory flow and cycle to expiration. The advantages of time cycling of breath include the ability to achieve careful control of minute volume, which is beneficial in scenarios where precise control of partial pressure of carbon dioxide is required. Ventilation remains unaffected by changes in lung compliance or airway resistance because the timing of the breath is governed by a timer rather than being influenced by respiratory system parameters. Additionally, minute ventilation is not impacted by an unreliable respiratory drive, making this method suitable for patients who are paralyzed or deeply unconscious. However, this method also has disadvantages which are basically the disadvantages of mandatory modes of ventilation. It is not suitable for lightly sedated or awake patients, as these individuals may become uncomfortable with a fixed, demand-independent inspiratory phase. Some breaths might need to be extended, while others might need to be shortened, which the method does not accommodate. Furthermore, there may be patient ventilator desynchrony, particularly if the patient attempts to exhale before the cycle timer completes its run. This situation can lead to a pressure increase at the end of inspiration, either due to lung compliance reaching a point of overdistension, or as in the example below, because a spontaneously breathing patient decides to exhale before the breath cycle ends. With flow cycled ventilation, the ventilator cycles into the expiratory phase once the flow has decreased to a predetermined value during inspiration. If we look at the flow waveform, we can appreciate that when the flow gets reduced to 20% of the peak inspiratory flow, the ventilator cycles into expiration. The flow cycling variable can be either a fixed flow value measured in liters per minute or a percentage of the peak flow rate achieved during inspiration. In some models, it is possible to set this value as an absolute number, such as 5 liters per minute. The Mackay servo represents the flow cycling variable as a percentage of peak inspiratory flow and offers a range of settings from 1% to 70%. In contrast, the Puritan Bennett 840 provides a maximum setting of only 45%. The flow of air in the lungs is influenced by the patient's respiratory mechanics including their effort, airway resistance, and lung compliance. As a result, the flow can vary significantly between patients and even between breaths for the same patient. Consequently, Using a fixed percentage of the peak inspiratory flow as the cycling threshold can lead to considerable variability in the flow rates at which the machine transitions from inspiration to expiration. For instance, 
the patients with restrictive lung disease like ARDS will have poor respiratory compliance and their flow rate will drop rather quickly due to stiffness of the lung. The rapid drop will reach the cycling threshold faster prematurely resulting in shorter inspiratory phase. Therefore, the tidal volume in the patient with restrictive lung disease is low. In contrast, the patient with emphysematous lung disease may have a very high lung compliance with greater flow with the same settings on the ventilator. So, the flow won't reach the prescribed threshold percentage leading to prolonged breath or delayed cycling. It is therefore important to understand the lung conditions of the patient before setting the cycling threshold. Also, with a lower flow cycling threshold, the inspiratory pressure remains elevated for a more extended period as the flow takes longer time to reach the threshold for cycling from the peak value. This results in a more sustained, square, waveform. Conversely, with a higher flow cycling setting, the inspiratory pressure declines more rapidly as it is easier for the flow to reach the higher cycling threshold. So, less squaring is seen with higher cycling values. Flow cycled ventilation offers numerous benefits along with a few drawbacks. One of the primary advantages is patient comfort, as it allows patients to control their respiratory effort, unlike time-cycled methods. If a patient needs to terminate a breath and exhale, the inspiratory flow ceases, and the ventilator quickly cycles to expiration. This rapid response is a significant benefit of flow-cycled ventilation. Additionally, flow cycling is influenced by changes in lung compliance and airway resistance, which can help prevent lung overdistension. For instance, in patients with poorly compliant lungs, the flow decreases swiftly, prompting the ventilator to cycle to expiration and thus preventing pressure buildup in the lungs. However, there are some disadvantages to consider. Patients with poor lung compliance may experience inadequate tidal volumes, leading to insufficient minute volume. The overall comfort of the patient hinges on intelligent settings. Incorrectly low settings could cause uncomfortably deep and prolonged inspiration, while excessively high settings might result in double triggering due to an insufficient inspiratory time. Overall, the flow cycling needs a good understanding of patient's respiratory physiology and a good understanding of the cycling setting on the ventilator for better patient comfort and outcome. We will discuss the pressure and volume cycling briefly as both are of just of historical importance and no longer used in modern ventilation. However, both pressure and volume gets big importance in control variables which shall be discussed sometime later. Just like flow cycling, during pressure cycled ventilation, inspiration ends when a certain user prescribed pressure value is achieved. Pressure cycling is a feature of historical ventilator models and has become largely obsolete in the modern era of microprocessor controlled solenoid valves. It was famous in the past because it only required nothing more than a spring-loaded diaphragm valve to act as the pressure cycling mechanism. It did have drawbacks like inadequate tidal volume if pressure threshold was set low and required higher patient effort to cycle the breath. Similarly volume cycled breath ends when the specified set volume has been delivered. Older models of piston ventilators were volume cycled or the ventilator would cycle to expiration when the piston delivered a predetermined volume. The volume will therefore remain constant, even though the characteristics of the patient's respiratory system may change. As a result, volume cycling has the propensity to generate high peak airway pressures when the lung compliance deteriorates resulting in large incidences of pneumothorax in the past.
Post-end expiratory pressure or simply PEEP is the final phase variable in a breath cycle and describes the baseline pressure which remains after inspiratory pressure is released as the patient exhales. This baseline pressure keeps the alveoli open to allow for adequate oxygenation and also recruits the closed alveoli in the sick lung and improves oxygenation. The expiratory phase in modern ventilators is generally a fairly passive and unexciting time, where the only thing happening is a slow bias gas flow seeping out of the circuit via the expiratory valve. Bias flow on a ventilator refers to the continuous flow of gas that is provided to the patient, even during the expiratory phase of the breathing cycle. The bias flow ensures that a certain amount of baseline pressure remains in the circuit and lung after inspiratory pressure is released as the patient exhales. PEEP actually governs most of the respiratory cycle of which traditionally 66% is expiratory time and has the closest relationship to mean airway pressure out of all the phase variables. Mean airway pressure is a common pressure monitoring parameter of mechanical ventilators that is closely correlated with mean alveolar pressure and represents stresses applied to the lung parenchyma during ventilation. If the applied PEEP is too high it can lead to overpressure of airways and if too low, the alveoli can collapse and hamper oxygenation. The healthy lung should be ventilated with 5 to 8 cm water of PEEP. The methods of choosing the optimal PEEP in various lung pathologies are discussed elsewhere.